Solving linear systems using substitution. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about what substitution is, how we apply it, and I'm going to do lots of examples for you. First of all, I want to make sure that you know how to isolate a variable. So if you're really um, sharp and you know how to do this already, you can skip fast forward a little bit while I do these little exercises just to make sure that um, you know how to solve for a specific variable. So for the first question here, it says solve for x, x plus 3y equals 8. So solving for x means I want to isolate 8, x, sorry. So I want to isolate x by putting it on one side of the equation and putting everything else to the other side. So very easy here. I have x equals 8. I bring the 3y to the other side, minus 3y, and that is solving for x. In this question here, we have a negative x, and some students have trouble with this. You can do it two ways. I can say, okay, well, I'll move the 7y over here. I'm going to show you both ways, okay, just in case you get confused here. So if I leave the negative x here, and I bring the y over here, I change its sign, and I make it minus 7y. Now you can see I've solved for negative x. That's not good enough. I want to solve for x. So I have to divide by a negative 1, which changes the sign of everything else on the other side. So everything divided by a negative 1. Now, that's option 1. The second option is that I just move the x across the equal sign here. So I'll leave the 7y here. I'll bring this minus 7 over here to make it plus 7. And then that's equal to x. Now, whether it's in this form, or we say x equals this, or this is equal to x, you can see that these are the very same equations, right? Or in the end, if you really want to write it the other way, I can say x equals 7y plus 7, which takes me back to the very same thing here. Okay, so whatever makes it easier for you, I think just bringing the x over here, a negative x over, and bring this one over here, that's probably the easiest method. In this one here, again, we're trying to solve for x. So make sure you identify the variable you want. And that means that these two things have to go to the other side of the equal sign. And to do that, all I have to do is change the sign as I cross over that equal sign. And you know why that happens, right? It's because I'm actually uh, subtracting 4y here and subtracting 4y on the other side of the equation. Okay, and the final one here, so here's my negative x. Make sure you check the sign in front of the variable. I'm just going to bring that to the other side of the equation. So I'm leaving everything else here. That's equal to x, or I can say x equals 2y minus 1. These, of course, are the same equations. So um, it's always good to just do some of the drill exercises first, just to make sure that you've got a good handle on solving for variables. So this one, solve for y. There's my y. I'm going to move this to the other side. So y equals, now you can say 11 minus 6x, so you can say minus 6x plus 11. doesn't matter. It means the same thing. This one here, um, these two go to the other side. So y equals minus 5x minus 5x minus 9. This one, I'm going to bring the y over here and then minus 2 to this side. So that will make this x plus 2 is equal to y. And finally, this one, again, a negative y. I'm just going to bring it over here. And just to get you not confused, but to flip it, I'm going to say y is equal to 3x plus 4. Okay, so in other words, I brought this over here, made it positive. So I had 3x plus 4 equals y, or y equals 3x plus 4. Okay, so it's very important that you're capable of isolating the variable before you start the substitution questions. So let's move on to what you need to do. So we're solving a linear system again. So that means I'm trying to find, remember, the point of intersection. That's what we did in the last exercise. So we solve linear systems by graphing, right? So substitution is another method. It's not the best in my opinion, but it works really well when you have a variable that only has a coefficient of one in front of it. So in other words, if I wanted to solve for one of these 
variables in both of these equations, the easiest one for me to solve for is the one that I want to work with. So this says x plus 4y equals 6, so I can very easily make that x is equal to 6 minus 4y. Okay, so that's what we were doing in that first little exercise. Now to substitute, remember substitution means you put something in for something else. If you've ever played any team sports like basketball, volleyball, hockey, um, soccer, someone substitutes in, you sub in someone for someone else. So here I have x is equal to this. And where I see the x here, I'm subbing in this. That's all you have to think about here. So when I sub this into here now, I have 2, and I'm going to put a bracket. Always put a bracket where you're substituting in because you're going to need to use a distributive property to expand. So 6 minus 4y, there I've subbed in a new value for x, and you can see now that by doing that, I have only y's in my equation, and it will be very easy for me to solve for y. So let's use a distributive property. So 2 times 6 is 12. 2 times minus 4y is minus 8y. Minus 3y is equal to 1. And now I'm going to bring the 12 to the other side. And I'm going to simplify this part. So minus 8, minus 3 more. So I have minus 11y is equal to 1. Minus 12 is minus 11. And so that means that 1y, and that's what we're trying to get to here, we're trying to solve just for y, so y is equal to 1. Once you have the value for y, you can solve for x in either of the equations. Now remember, you're finding the point of intersection, so solving only for one variable is only doing half of the work. And in this case, because you're asked to check, it's even less than half the work. So don't stop yet. So I'm going to use the first equation. I just put a little one here so you know where I'm using it. So I'm going to use equation one and I'm going to say x plus four times one is equal to six. So this is x plus four. Now I'm going to subtract four and I get x is equal to two. So therefore I'm going to say two one is the solution or the point of intersection. Now the question also asks you to check. So when you check you have to substitute your values for x and y back into these two equations to prove that the this point is on both of these lines. That's what you're doing, right? It's a point. Point of intersection is a point that's on this line and this line. Okay, so let's plug that in. So we're going to say equation 1, uh, left side equals x plus 4y, and the right side is already given as 6. You don't have to work with this one. So now substituting in 2, 1, which is my solution, I say left side equals 2 plus 4 times 1 equals 6. So now the left side equals the right side. That's good. Now we have to make sure that it also satisfies the second equation. So the left side of equation 2 is going to be 2x minus 3y. And the right side is going to be 1. I plug in 2 for x, 1 for y. So 2 times 2 minus 3 times 1. That's 4 minus 3 equals 1 left side equals right side, therefore 2, 1 is the solution. So I've proven that the point that I solved for here satisfies both of the equations, which means that it's on the point of intersection of the two lines. Okay, let's move on to <coughs> a little more difficult one here. So the first thing you want to do, let me just have a little drink. You want to take a look at both of the equations and determine which equation would be the easiest one to solve for a certain variable. 
So this has a five in front. These have coefficients, but lo and behold, this one here is my perfect one to solve for because it just says Y here. So I'm not going to end up with any crazy numbers here to sub in. So I'm going to call this equation one and equation two, and I'm going to solve for Y. So Y equals, I bring the seven to the other side, minus seven X. Okay, so now I'm going to do that substitution part. So you have to sub it back into the other equation, right? You're not going to put 7x in here because then you'd get 0 equals 0. That's great, but you didn't solve for anything. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to sub it in right here for this y. Okay, so let's do that. So 5x minus 3 times minus 7x minus 2 equals 0. So I've substituted, that's why this is called substitution. I subbed in the minus 7x for the y. Now be careful here because when I expand this, I get 5x minus 3 minus 7x. That's negative times a negative becomes a positive. So 21x, and I bring the 2 to the other side, and I end up with 26x is equal to 2. And oh no, we're going to have a fraction, but that's okay. So we get 2 over 26, and you should always reduce your fractions. So that gives me 1 over 13. So that's the x value. So what is y equal to? Well, y is equal to minus 7x. That would be the easiest one to solve for. So y equals minus 7 times 1 over 13. So that's, I'm substituting this x in here. So um, now I'm just going to um, expand this. So I have minus 7 over 13. So you can see that the solution for this one, 1 over 13, and minus 7 over 13 would have been very difficult for you to find that point of intersection had you used the graphing technique, right? It's really hard to find 1 13th. Okay, so this is what I think is the solution. So therefore, this is the solution. And I'm going to check my answer by using left side, right side again. So I have equation 1. Left side equals, so 5x minus 3y minus 3y minus 2, and the right side is equal to 0. So plug everything in. So I have 5 times 1 over 13 minus 3 times minus 7 over 13 minus 2. Now let's do some math here. So we have 5 thirteenths. And I have plus 21 over 13 minus 2. So that gives me 26 over 13. 26 divided by 13 is 2 minus 2 equals 0. So for the first equation, the left side is equal to the right side. Now let's do the um, second equation. The left side equals... 7x plus y, the right side is equal to 0. So I'm plugging again, I'm plugging back in this solution that I had. So where I see the x, I put a bracket and I put in my fraction plus minus 7 over 13, which of course is just minus 7 over 13. So that gives me 7 over 13 minus 7 over 13 and that gives me zero. Yay. So therefore, left side equals right side and one thirteenth minus seven thirteenths is the solution because I've not only solved for it, I've proven that I am correct. Okay, so let's move on to a couple of other examples here because sometimes you run into some little difficulties with these, and that's what I'm hoping to show you here with this one. Solve using substitution. Okay, so I don't want to use 
this to isolate X or Y. This one I could do either, right? Because they both have a coefficient of 1. It's easy. X is 6 minus Y or Y is 6 minus X. Your choice. Let's solve for X. So I'm going to say X is equal to 6 minus Y. Now I'm going to substitute. So I'm going to sub into the other equation. Right? I'm not going to plug it back in here, and if you do, you'll see right away it just doesn't make any sense. If I put in 6 minus y here, I get 6 equals 6. Didn't find anything. So I'm going to plug in this. Better get my color out, right? 6 minus y is going to go in here for that x. So you have to remember the 2, though. Don't forget the 2 is in front here. And I'm going to plug in 6 minus y. This is equation 1 again. So I plugged in 6 minus y for the x plus 2y equals 7. I think you can see now that I'm going to be able to solve for y. So expand 2 times 6, 2 times minus y plus 2y equals 7. And look what I get here. Minus 2y plus 2y. I get 0y equals 7 minus 12 minus 5. Now, what does this mean if I get zero y's? That's saying if I tried to solve for y here, I'd be dividing by zero, which of course you can never do in math. Or you could look at it another way by saying, what value times zero will give me negative five? Well, nothing does, right? No matter what I multiply by zero, I'm going to get zero. So this is, there's no solution, right? No solution. So what does that mean about our lines? If we go back to this equation here, and we, we could either graph it, or I'm going to write this into y equals mx plus b format. So I would have 2y equals, so I'm bringing the 2x over, so I have minus 2x, minus 2x, plus 7. So all I did was bring this over here. And to get y, I would divide by 2. That gives me negative x plus 7 over 2. So that's my first equation. Now let's take a look at the second equation. If I put this into y equals mx plus b format, I would have y equals negative x plus 6. And I think that you've done enough math by now to note that if we did a quick sketch of this, um, let's see, we got 6. So if I did a quick sketch, you should see right away that they have the same slope, negative 1, and they have different y-intercepts. So this one starts up at 6 and has a slope of negative 1, so it's going something like this. I'm not going to be too exact here. And the other one has a y-intercept of 7 halves, which would be 3 and a half and it has a slope of negative 1. So you can see that obviously these lines are never going to intersect. So no solution. And the reason is that the lines are parallel. Parallel lines never cross. So they have the same slope and a different y-intercept. Okay, so that's that's showing you what can happen if you had zero y, right? You want to check to see, do they have the same slope? Is that why I've got no solution? Because sometimes you'll get to here and you say, oh, I must have done something wrong. But no, check your, check your equations and make sure that um, they would have a point of intersection. Okay, 2x minus y minus 3 equals 0, and 6x minus 3y minus 9 equals 0. So to use substitution on this, I would choose this first equation and solve for y. Right? This is the one. It's got the y in front. So that would give me, I'm going to bring the y to the other side, just like we did in that beginning exercise. So I have 2x minus 3 is equal to y. Now I'm going to sub that in here, right here for this y. I'm going to plug this in, right? Okay, so now I have 6x minus 3 times 2x minus 3 minus 9 
equals zero. Okay, so let's expand. Minus three times two x is minus six x, and minus three times minus three is plus nine minus nine equals zero. Whoa, now look what happens. Six x minus six x, nine minus nine, I get zero equals zero. So what does this mean now? Well, if we go back to the equations, first of all, let's look at equation one, and let's put that into y equals mx plus b format. So if I move that over, first I had this, right? So I had y equals 2x minus 3. I already had it in mx plus b format when I isolated the y. But this one, if I said um, 6x x minus 9 equals, so I'm saying I'm going to bring this minus 3y over here, so 3y, and I'm going to flip it around the other way just to start so you can see it more clearly. So I just switch this side to this side. Remember if I said 3 plus 1 equals 4 or 4 equals 3 plus 1, I haven't changed anything at all. This is quite legitimate. And I'm going to divide by 3, each term by 3 and I get y equals 2x minus 3. And there's the problem. That's why we got 0 equals 0, because this line and the first line, so this was equation 1, this is actually equation 2, simplified, they're exactly the same line. So that means if I graphed them, y equals 2x minus 3, so I have minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, up, 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. They're both the very same line. They're right on top of each other. So all points, this has an infinite, infinite number of solutions. Infinite number of solutions. Or you could say they're the same line. This has no points of intersection, and this has an infinite number. Okay, so that's your lesson on solving linear systems by substitution. The next lesson will show you what I think is the best way to solve, and that's using elimination for the more difficult questions. Bye for now. Don't forget to subscribe. Boop.